so that we can have the recording. And I will say welcome, everyone. Thank you all for being here. This is the second of the Dental Peers series of webinars that we will be uh, hosting. And uh, I, we have some other guests here. Our, our panelists today have their own vast network of, of people and contacts and friends and associates they wanted to invite. So to those of you who are not members of the Dental Peers Buying Group, thank you very much for joining us and welcome. We have a very exciting evening planned out for you this evening with three of the most wonderfully talented, knowledgeable, and on top of that, deeply compassionate, great friends, as well as wonderful business colleagues that I could possibly imagine, people that I am very privileged to have had the opportunity to spend some time with, get to know on a, on a personal as well as a professional level. And I can tell you that without, without fail, I love all three of them uh, for everything that they bring. So I want to thank the three of them for for being here with us this evening and for the incredible amount of great information that they are going to share with us tonight. So before we get into introductions and, and other things, we've got the usual sort of, um, sorry, admitting people, we've got the usual sort of uh, house cleaning matters that we have to attend to. So I think everyone is coming on. I appreciate it. You're all coming on with your cameras off and your speakers muted. If you can make sure that you stay that way and if you'll just have the four of us to look at and you can always block me so that you have the best three to look at. Um, I will basically be here as the moderator this evening. If you do have any questions, we are going to treat this as a conversation. We've got things that I think all of us feel are important in terms of the information that we want to share with you, but it's going to be treated as a conversation. So there'll be opportunities for you to ask questions, but I'm going to ask that you use the chat function and I will do the best that I can to get to those questions. Can't make any promises because if the conversation is going like gangbusters, I don't want to interrupt it. So, um, but please feel free to, to use the chat function and ask any questions that, that you have. Uh, and we will definitely make sure that this session is being recorded. One of the first things I did was hit the record button. So I will be sending out the link afterwards if you uh, miss any parts or want to rewatch it. And just by way of reminder, this is our second of them, and we'll get into the more monthly schedule. I know we held our first one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we don't necessarily want to be taking up every evening all the time. So look for us to go to our monthly schedule after this one tonight and October 21st, as a matter of fact. And we'll be welcoming a legend in the world of dental consulting. Linda Miles will be joining us along with Nancy Crossan. And if you have not had the opportunity to meet or see them, they are wonderful too. They are going to be talking about how you should not let a pandemic interfere with improving your business. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the wonderful people who you are going to be hearing from tonight. And I'm going to start off with my, my friend Jennifer Turner. Now Jennifer is someone who has built a reputation in the world of dental hygiene as a natural leader based on her sheer professionalism, her leadership skills, and of course a ton of energy that she has bringing that passion to the forefront all the time. She's currently the Vice President of Dental Hygiene Operations at 123 Dentist. And prior to that, Jennifer was the past president and chief governance officer with the College of Dental Hygienists of Ontario, the director of dental hygiene practice with the Canadian Dental Hygienists Association, and she is a award-winning award dental hygiene professor. And I can see why when I get to speak to her and see that passion and enthusiasm. Now, she's worked with numerous practices across Canada, supporting teams that are dealing with issues of change management, implementation of clinical systems, all designed to enhance and support optimal patient care. She has been described as energetic and knowledgeable, a dynamic speaker, and has a true passion for dental, the dental hygiene profession. That's not my description of her, but I certainly would second that. She definitely brings all those things to the table. So Jennifer, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Thank you, Sean. Uh, next, we have Kathleen Bacrossi. Now, Kathleen has been bringing her unique brand of ener engaging energy to the dental profession for more than 30 years, so you would not know that from hey. looking by any means. 
She is the founder and president of RDHU Inc., which means that she's got that passion and knowledge for dentistry, but also loves to combine it with her entrepreneurial flair. Now, RDHU Inc. is a professional development company that provides team events, hands-on education, and online learning. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised that many of you or some of your team members have participated in one of the events Kathleen has hosted. She's an interactive and popular presenter, extremely busy as I've been hearing over the last couple of weeks in the world of virtual webinars and presentations. And she serves, as the, as, serves on the Speakers Bureau for Crest Oral-B, um, for, uh, and she's a key opinion leader for Bisco Canada and Ivo Clar Vivident. She's written many articles for dental publications and has contributed a chapter on instrumentation for a U.S. textbook. Now, Kathleen works closely with dental practices to help them thrive in today's very unique and challenging marketplace. In all aspects of her interactions with colleagues, consumers, and dental professions, Kathleen stays true to her vision to help transform the dental hygiene experience for the benefit of the practice, the clinicians, and of course, for the patients. Kathleen, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Last and certainly by no means least is our friend, because we're all friends here, Dr. Angela Mulrooney. Now, Dr. Mulrooney has had the unique and very challenging experience of taking a, shall we say, somewhat dilapidated, turned down, run down practice and turning it into a cutting edge practice where not only was it for the benefit of many of her own patients, but many dentists were referring her patients to her, their patients to her to work on full mouth reconstruction, IV sedation, and on sleep apnea therapy. She achieved a great result in doing so because she was able to take that practice, doubled her hourly production, worked 50% fewer hours, a goal for so many of us, all by the top of the ripe old age of 28 years of age. Pretty incredible accomplishment right there. So she knows what she's, where she's speaking of because she's definitely walked that walk. Now, after unfortunately sustaining a career ending injury, Kathleen did not, or sorry, Dr. Mulroney did not lose her passion for dentistry by any means, though she had to remove herself from the clinics, but she decided instead to turn that tragedy into an opportunity to share her knowledge, her credibility, and her experience in production boosting secrets by going into the world of practice management and social media marketing, all with a view to help her talented colleagues realize their full potential, both clinically and entrepreneurially. Dr. Mulroney, Angela, thank you for joining us all the way from Calgary. Thanks for having me. So thanks again to all of you for being here. Um, I think, you know, we're going to just dive right into things and, and, and let the conversation go. We know, unfortunately, that, that events are, keep changing rapidly. When we were planning this, we would have, you know, we knew that there was the possibility of that there could be a second wave happening by the time we actually held this event. And lo and behold, sadly, it is here. So I'm just kind of curious as to what you guys are seeing and experiencing in terms of watching as the numbers of positive COVID cases are climbing in your area and the impacts that it's having on patients, on doctors, on practices in your, in your neck of the woods. So I'd like to start with our, with our, our view out in Calgary and see what, what things are happening out West. So uh, Angela, if you could share some of your thoughts on that and we'll go from there. We're definitely seeing a dip in production in the majority of practices. Um, one of my friends who's a major cosmetic dentist, he's actually seen a boost in his production of uh, cosmetic cases. And he attributes to, you know, these people are used to taking fancy vacations and now they've got extra money to spare. So they're investing it in the smile that they've been staring at because they've been stuck at home. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is definitely the exception to the rule. And uh, across the board, across Canada and US, Everyone is struggling with HR problems. Uh, team members are not wanting to come back. And if they do, they're kind of demanding the moon, holding uh, practices captive. And so it's been, it's challenging times for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and how about now getting closer to where we are here in Ottawa on the Ontario side of things? Jen, what are you seeing in your world? So I think, um, you know, coming to the second wave, a lot of us didn't think, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? 
I'm proud to say for dentistry, dental hygiene, dental assisting, you know, it does prove that our PPE for years has worked so well, even though I think all of our friends here tonight, you know, maybe themselves have worn a mask around their chin or they've seen somebody walking down the hall. So now PPE is at maximum um, use. And so we're very well protected. But one area that I see um, that, you know, can all sort of tug at our heart is we know that, you know, uh, dental hygiene for is made up of 90% women. So when you think of dental assistants, majority again is female. Dentists can be 50-50, but you know, maybe there's young kids at school, maybe there's COVID at school, maybe they have a sore throat, a cough. So we really have to be very fluid in how we respect um, our team members because they're pulling double duty, right? They might be doing homeschooling, trying to work, sandwich generation with parents. So um, it's not like before. We really, we really have to be um, very respectful and kind because it's a day-to-day -day sort of approach to what's happening. And I think a lot of people were, um, I know with us, with our members, we, we did a poll to find out how many dental hygienists um, were actually back to work. And this was in August. And there was a large percentage of people that hadn't gone back yet and they had planned to go back in September. But now just hearing what's going on, I know a lot of them decided not to go back and they decided to keep their kids at home. And so it leaves... Um, a lot of offices short and uh, so we've definitely seen um, a lot of um, messages for jobs like hiring dental hygienists, hiring dental assistants and offering a lot of money because mm -hmm. there's just such a, sh a shortage of it, of them. Yeah, I've actually seen a lot more signing bonuses, moving bonuses, a lot more than ever before because people are desperate. Every day in my inbox, someone's asking for a dental assistant, dental hygienist, do you know a good temp? And it's not even finding a body anymore. It's, you know, do, can they find the right person to fit inside their practice is more and more difficult, right? So um, we'll see what happens in the days ahead. And I think it also gave people the opportunity for dental hygienists, for instance, that maybe weren't happy in, in, in their practice to make a big change. Like, I think COVID has given us all the, um, the time to be, you know, thinking about, do I want to go back, um, not only to work, but to different things? Like, do I keep wanting to go and get my nails done? Do I want to go to that doctor? Do I want to go back to work and work for that dentist? So um, in, in every aspect, I think people are making big changes and taking this as the opportunity. And same for, for dentists, um, thinking, you know, I can only bring back three out of my five and they're going to, you know, now's the time that perhaps they can, um, cut ties with the ones that perhaps like wasn't a good fit. So I'm seeing that a lot too. Mm -hmm. and I'm also seeing a lot of collaboration as well between practices looking at like, okay, if my lease is up, can I move my practice into someone else's practice and we can share the space and share the cost of the lease and be able to help ourselves to be able to get through the, up to the other side of this and maybe not have my beautiful empire that I'm used to running all by myself. Um, but actually just sharing that so we can make a living and have less stress. And I think uh, to what you said, Kathleen, is people are really looking to redesign their life. They're looking to redesign their practice and focus on what is really important for them. And it's not the almighty dollar bill. There's a lot of quality of life that has been reevaluated, family life that people are taking a hard look at and seeing, you know, what do I really want out of this lifetime? Mm -hmm. And do you guys find, I know it seems every day or every other day, someone's also asking, you know, hey, Jen, do you know, like, how do I get out of clinical practice? Yes. How do I become a sales rep? How do I get into education? I want to get into re health regulation. What's really a DSO? What do you guys do different? So I find more people have soul searched and maybe got on Google and tried to figure out other avenues because they don't necessarily um, want that clinical career for as long as they thought they might. So I'm not sure if you guys are seeing that as well. Yep. I talk to someone every day with that and they're like, what can I do with the skills that I have to follow a different path like you have? And uh, it's interesting to help them to open their mind to the possibilities because a lot of times we get out of school and we have this linear path that we're supposed to follow. And then something like this happens and we're like, eh, not sure if I really like that path. And there's anything that you've done in your life education-wise, career-wise, is still going to be applicable to inform you how to move into a different career path. It's just really having the courage to do that. And also there's been a lot of people who just retired. <laughs> yeah. 
simple, like, I'm going to retire. Um, cause it's just, they didn't want to go back to hand scaling or, you know, um, so yeah, big, big life changes, but we need people in, in, in the clinic. That's important. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough because we're not in clinic any longer. So it's hard to, uh, um, but we can only guide as much as we can and, and help people with, um, some ideas on transitioning and there's a lot of neat opportunities and to stay in the dental field is fantastic. Uh, we're very fortunate to be doing different things um, versus clinic, but I still love and miss doing clinic at the same time. So, you know, it's just, you have to follow your path, follow your dreams and, 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 and do what's right for you and your family, right? It's, you got to make the right choices for your family. Yeah, I think there's there's certainly been a lot like that we've seen where people, like you said, are are evaluating what is important to them and 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 looking for opportunities outside the clinic, making sure that obviously you know I mean they've got years that they've invested in in the educational background and continuing educational training, uh, not to mention the day to day practical knowledge that they've gained, and you don't want to necessarily let that all go. It's hard to do a complete change and go into something that has absolutely nothing to do with dentistry but uh i mean i mean it's a challenge because at the same time a lot of these supply companies that they might be looking towards saying would they would they be looking for any reps would I, could i go that route i mean they've been hit as well right so i mean they may not necessarily have the same needs for making changes and and are wondering about keeping their own teams going Another thing that I'm seeing, though, are a lot of dental hygienists um, investing in, in themselves. So they're actually coming to us and to increase their, their skills in different aspects, taking lasers, um, learning different instrumentation techniques, and getting a little bit more under their belt so that they can be prepared um, for what's coming next for them, whether it's they stay with who they're with or whether they're going to look for something else. And it's always good to reinvest in yourself and, and, and get those extra skills and, and always improving. That's the key. Like whether you're in clinic or you're um, doing something else, the idea is that we always want to keep growing and learning and, and staying engaged with, with our profession. And that makes for a very happy, satisfying life. Mm -hmm. And on that note, Kath, I found that um, a lot of um, dental hygienists have reached out in the past six months about degree completion. Mm -hmm. So they do the degree. And I know like Canadian Dental Hygienists Association is a very big promoter of dental hygienists getting their degree. And so the time at home that we've all spent, they've been saying, should I, you know, do this degree completion? Should I spend X amount of dollars? And, you know, it's it, education is always wonderful layer you're learning it can bring us to different parts but you know it's not just clinical dentistry that is in trouble with a pandemic it's it's everywhere so you have to think about what is your ultimate goal at the end because life as we know it is probably not going to be the same as it is now as it will be in two years so but just good that everyone is thinking yeah i know like when when um covid first hit like we were doing events across the country so we had all these events planned which was a lot of a lot of work, a lot of planning, and all of a sudden it was like breaks are on and we had to cancel everything going across and then we went live. And I have to say like we did this whole uh, free relief program with Crescent Oral B and we had over 3,000 dental hygienists on with us that got free. We, we gave away over one million dollars of CE in that short time. So it was fantastic because everybody just wanted to learn and it kept them being positive and staying connected. Like we had people crying on the phone with us, like Kathleen, I can't believe if you guys weren't there, I don't know what I would have done. So it was like, we all helped each other because it was really scary at the beginning. So everybody was working on their, whether it was portfolio in Ontario or their CE in other provinces, everybody was like staying connected and kind of just, it was almost like every day we were on with each other. We always had, I had to increase our bandwidth to a thousand people because we always maxed out and then we'd record it and other people would watch it. So it was just a really nice way to see people staying, to, staying connected. And then some people were like saying, I was ready to quit. And then I saw you guys on the show, the RDHU, and that motivated me to, to change. And you, you know, you changed my mindset. And so it's really nice when you can really pull in professional development, but with a, you know, with a changing your mindset mentality, right? And it's about having that abundance mindset, 
versus the scarcity mindset. And that's the thing that I see with offices that are thriving is those that have the abundance mindset that are really doing well. And it's the ones that are, you know, trying to practice the way that they used to and trying to watch every penny and, and trying to chintz out on things that they're the ones that are struggling, right? So having that positive mindset, you attract positive people and you can all enjoy working together and have that wonderful culture in, in, in the new norm. Cause it's not about, it's not about, um, you know, what do I have to do to, to, to survive this? It's like, well, how do I change in order for me to succeed in this ever changing environment? And that's the mentality that I really feel has helped a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think there's been so much collaboration too, which density is usually pretty cutthroat, especially amongst owners. And for the first time, we really saw people really come together. When the second wave hits, I'm hoping people are still going to be behaving that way because usually when things get hyper competitive, they tear each other from limb to limb. Um, but I think that collaboration also brought a lot of innovation because there's people thinking, you know, all these things have changed. How can I help solve this for the community? Not just for myself, but actually be able to put something out there. And yes, there's money to be made by being innovative, but I feel like a lot of that innovation came from really solid places to be able to help the community instead of just being self-serving with trying to develop something that they could sell. So that was I, like, I talked to, I have different tech companies pitch me every week on interesting stuff and there's still so much coming out that is problem solving for our community. So it's amazing to witness that. So it sounds like you're going to be auditioning for to be a dragon or something like that. You know, they're all pitching you. You're going to be you know, the dragons on Dragon Day. I don't know why I get pitched, but I do get pitched. It's so fascinating. I, 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 this is interesting, and I'd certainly like to go there a little bit if we can, because I think one of the big things that everyone is, is looking at is, you know, we do see some offices that are struggling more than others. Some offices have, uh, have, have managed to get through that first wave, that, that shutdown that lasted for two to three months, depending on where your office, where you're located in Canada, and, and some bounced back quite well. Others, it's been a bit more of a struggle for them. So, so what's worked? What have you seen that's worked for those offices that, that tried things and, and came back and came back fairly strong? What did they do that made it work for them? I think a lot of them had a can-do attitude. So instead of just seeing the obstacle, they were like, okay, this is the path I was on. How can I adjust my path to be able to get around the obstacle instead of just seeing the obstacle for what it was? And that comes with innovation, that comes with getting the team to pull together. The ones that did poorly, typically, I found they hid their head in the sand and didn't communicate with their team, they didn't communicate with their patients, and they did themselves and the reputation of giant disservice by doing that because the patient, like a lot of people um, on the professional end, not the dental end, when I was talking to them during COVID, they're like, yeah, more than 50% were telling me they were gonna switch dentists because they didn't like how it was handled. Um, but the ones who were proactive and said, you know what, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to operate on the best information. I'm going to communicate and say, you know what, today, this is what I think I should do. Tomorrow, that might change. Those are the people who really got their team on board. They got their patients on board. And they're the ones who are kicking butt right now in their practices, despite the chaos that's going on. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing was the way that they communicated. Um, I have this, this uh, webinar that I did, it's called Nourishing Relationships During COVID. And I actually gave people our, our PowerPoint. So I would have, you know, talk about being um, grateful, showing gratitude and staying engaged. And then I had this PowerPoint that I actually gave to everybody that was on it. And then they were using it to engage with their, with their patients. And uh, I had really great feedback from that because a lot of people didn't think about it, didn't think about, oh, okay, so maybe we should get in touch with our patients. Maybe we should do Zoom with our, with our team, right? But just like cutting off, that's like the worst thing that you could possibly do is, is just cutting off. And even now, like I'm sure a lot of people, patients haven't come back. And so it's not too late to communicate with them. You know, do a video of you walking through, look at, um, this is what you're going to see. This is our screening protocol. This is what you can expect. Um, this is our air purifier. This is our PPE, like all the things. This is how you're going to be greeted. This is how you're going to leave. Just so that you're showing people and making them feel safe. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about safe safety and, and their health. And we know that their oral health is linked to their overall health. So sharing that message is key. And I think the people that did that 
um, are, are doing well at this time. And I would say, um, you know, I'm thrilled to be part of 123 Dentists. We have great leadership. And I was so proud of the regional manager team because they're all, they all have dental industry knowledge. So first and foremost, you knew how it felt to not be with patients. But all of us, great teams, we're all human beings first. So setting up WhatsApp, WhatsApp chats, having, you know, regular Zoom meetings with your teams to make sure not just about the business, but first and foremost, how are you? You know, our CEO said, we have PPE for your families if you need it. Like, just ask us what you need. So I think that human being, that human touch with everyone, like that stands out um, to make good teams even greater throughout this pandemic. And I think every single one of us has learned so many lessons about life and what really matters. And um, we're never going to be where we were before, and that's okay, right? I, I like that, Jen, and it's sort of one of the things that I like to coach people on. And it was one of the things, to be quite frank, that when I did my MBA was one of, was how we were coached when we were doing meetings. And and obviously, you know, if you've got a, a huge team, you can't necessarily do it with every uh, everyone at a meeting. But you open up every meeting just by doing a round table of going around and saying, "How is everyone?" Give everyone one, two minutes. It doesn't have to be that much time. Let Maybe they've got some sort of wonderful success that they want to celebrate with the team and we can all pat them on the back. Maybe they've had a bit of a tough go with something was going on in their lives over the last week and they just need to share it. And, and I think you've touched upon something incredibly important about that because, you know, we get in so often with, with meetings where team members always say, oh, yeah, you know, we, we, our team runs terrible meetings. And it's like one of the things they do is, is they just go right in. They sort of like we're, we're rushing it. We don't schedule enough time to hold a proper meeting. We try to squeeze it in during our lunch hour because heaven forbid that we interfere with productive time where a patient might come in. And so there's that opportunity to just do a check-in just doesn't happen. And, and I, happen, right. It, it, in order to be an effective team together, um, you can't start anything without like that check-in one word to describe, how are you feeling today? Right. Yep. Something and, to personal level. And, and I think those offices that did have that contact with their team during the first wave, um, I think they kind of, you know, maybe they weren't doing that particular aspect before, but I think they learned all of a sudden how important it was and they'd start their Zoom meetings right off the bat. How's everyone doing? Yeah. And another thing, I'm not sure if you guys have been on some, you know, business calls, but I think it's super important for everybody to have your camera on because if we have our cameras, I know our, our audience, you guys are under the curtain, but oh, um, totally okay, yeah. but Day after day, if you just see like, you know, Jen Turner on my thing and you never see my face, I could have a bad hair day or, you know, you've been inside for 30 days, but really who cares? We need to feel each other's energy and, um, and be alive, right? And it's so important. What's, what have you guys felt then in terms of then reaching out to patients has been the most effective thing that, that offices that have succeeded through that first wave and maybe starting to have to plan about what could come in this second wave? What, what worked? in terms of their patient communications? So I can speak on behalf of, uh, of my network. Um, you know, there was a lot of seniors that were shut in, that were alone, and those pick up the phone the old fashioned way and have conversations. And we found that, you know, you know what we thought might have been, you know, you could have text messaged them or you could have done recall max or whatever system you're using, but actually picking up the call and the things that came out of patients and lots of people felt alone. They might not have a family around them. So that human connection, human phone call just worked wonders. And also doing drop-offs of, of products. Like we did the, you know, the um, oral health essentials with the power brush and everything, or just even little um, gift bags that people would drop off or doing curbside pickup. Um, it's just, you, you need to stay connected. Um, you know, for, for me, like I had a terrible accident, it's been almost a year and I, I broke my leg very badly and shattered my ankle. So I'm in physio still like a couple times a week, but for, to have that experience where, you know, I was told how it's so important because I'm still recovering and all of a sudden I was cut off, um, from something that was essential. 
and I never heard from anybody. They called me once to do an online thing. It just didn't work out. But it really, it really hurt me to be like, where's all the people? Because I was there three times a week. Um, you know, I would get the tools that I needed. So, you know, I'd have the bands and the balls and everything, but I thought it would be great if they had dropped off something, thinking of you in this recovery, some, something, because I felt like it was all like just a big hoax. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it wasn't really that important after all. Um, so it's just, I think for our, our patients that were saying, you know, you should be coming in every three months, you know, it's essential, especially with our, our compromised patients, like, you know, dropping something off for them, uh, making sure that they're taken care of, you know, um, so not to just have, you know, the crickets and no, no connection, um, showing them the right tools and, and, and communicating with them. I think that's, that's the biggest thing that we could do. Mm -hmm. And I always think social media as well is a great way to keep things flowing because you, you, can have the opportunity to create that personal connection in a big way, especially if you're a team and you are on, on videos and whatnot, constantly talking to your potential audience in your existing audience of patients who really love you. And they get to see that you're still excited about dentistry and you know, you're going through this and you're one of them. I think of that authenticity, which is something we often don't see in dental practice because we're so busy and we're trying to get things done and, and now, especially when a new patient is going to a practice, you're meeting someone with a mask on. You're seeing their eyes and you don't really know what they look like. And so if you can create that bit of relationship with them before they get there by being able to send them videos, welcome videos saying, hey, we know things are going to be a little weird around here, but this is what the team looks like underneath their mask, like kind of make a joke about it. You have the opportunity to let people uh, put their guard down and um, I think that's an amazing thing. And for a lot of people too, like with, when we're dealing with this HR shortage, we're dealing with a lot of problems. If you can have people working from home because they've got their kids in their background and they can still be working with patients, they can be on Zoom, they can be having great conversations. That is honestly one of the best ways to get that connection going again, because they're going to be seeing you. They're going to be in their home. They're going to be comfortable, but they actually get to see you and spend time with you instead of being rushed with like trying to clean everything up and make sure that, you know, we're following proper protocols and everything is weird. It looks like we're dealing with a major, like a CDC situation where we've got the, all the garb on. It's a really weird situation for patients. So if you can have those moments where you, you are back to normal, even though you're not in person, that really does help with the patients as well. Uh, I've been seeing that we're all living in the world of Billy Idol. We're all going around with our eyes without a face. <laughs> <laughs> I also think to you guys that one key thing um, where some of our telephone conversations was, we all know dentistry and dental hygiene were all over the media. And then dental assisting got thrown in there in Ontario. And so patients were at home watching the nightly news for the number of cases. And, you know, here's the dental hygiene college, here's the dentist college. And what does this mean? And you're seeing news clips and people speaking. And so it can be really scary for those, you know, that were thinking about maybe coming in. So having conversations and I agree and having social media to try and um, educate in a, a way that they can learn at their leisure is super super beneficial to calm the fears and know that patients um, are welcome and here's kind of when we were opening and here's what to expect. So I think that's all fantastic, you guys. Now, now Angela, if I can just sort of follow up a little bit with respect to that too. So were you knowing um, or talking to a number of dentists who were having either themselves or their team members reaching out to patients through Zoom? Well, this is one of the, the opportunities we have with innovation because everyone has gotten used to having these kind of calls, right? And for some of them, they were using Zoom. Some of them were just using phone calls. But I think Zoom has a major place or a, any teledentistry platform has a major place in our practices moving forward from an efficiency perspective and also from well, even an infection control perspective. If you have one less person who could potentially get sick or bring something into the office, why would we not leverage that? And there's that comfort again, like my practice was phobic. So if I had been smart enough back then to be leveraging Zoom, I don't think it even existed a decade ago, but if I could have been talking to phobic patients from the comfort of their home, I could have developed a way faster rapport than them being like scared to cross the threshold into my practice. And, you know, I, I just, 
I see so much opportunity. There's so much technology we can be using to pre-scan people. And then they're not worried about spending that time in the clinic, breathing things in. If they're worried about that, they don't run, really want to be in the office, but if we can minimize their time, it helps the practices to be efficient, but it also gives that comfort to the patient that they're reducing their exposure. And we always are going to have tons of patients who are compromised as well. So they are not going to want to go in. And I have a few people who are looking at developing mobile dental hygiene um, systems so that they can go to people's places instead of them coming into an office. So again, we have all this amazing innovation happening because of um, the giant roadblock that was put in our way. Right. Are, are we slow as, an in, as a profession then in picking up the world of teledentistry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And people are resistant now that people are able to come to the practice. Some that kind of adopted it are like, oh, I don't have to do that anymore. And I think that is a really bad move, especially again with our HR crisis that we're dealing with. We've got so much of a shortage of people. If they can't be in your office, can you find a way to set them up at home and get them a good camera where they can be sitting? You can have someone who's being in a, a virtual admin who can be greeting people on a screen. Like there's, it sounds a bit, sci-fi compared to what we're used to but if this is what we're going to be dealing with for the next two years and we're going to constantly have a shortage of people i think it's one of those big solutions that we should be jumping on board with not going oh i hope this goes away i've actually gone to see a specialist and i'm thinking i'm seeing the doctor and then i go in and there's just a screen and the doctor's there on the computer screen i'm like hello <laughs> But uh, it was a little bit odd, but I had to do it twice and it was fine. But I guess now with those types of appointments, it'll be from the comfort of your home versus going there and then finding that you don't have a warm body there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, I think it's great. I think it's great to triage um, and to start even just screening. You could do that that way as well. Um, I think there's a lot of things that, that we can do with teledentistry. So hopefully that takes off. I'm sure it will especially with the second wave coming. I think it'll, it'll be helping a lot of offices. Yeah. And there's other technologies like dental monitoring and SmileMate. They're being co combined together. But if people are doing Invisalign, which I just got put in today, yay for me. Um, and they sent me home with my dental monitoring kit. So it's kind of cool because I'm going to be traveling a lot and not going to be able to go into the office. So we have the ability to do teledentistry. They can see my mouth because of the scanning box. And that's a tool that a lot of offices should be considering because, you know, if you've got rural patients who don't want to be driving into the city and having, again, potentially exposure or they just have so much on their plate, leveraging these technologies is going to make a difference, a huge difference in your practice. And it makes the patients feel like you care because you are trying to accommodate the situation. You're not going, well, this is the way I've always done it. So I'm just going to keep doing it that way. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I agree. I know I've certainly been one to, to try to beat the, the teledentistry drum because I, I'm with you. I think it has tremendous potential. Um, it's something that obviously it, it, it takes some time. There's going to be a period of trial and error where you're going to go through with something and, and deal with your first teledentistry patient and it may not go quite as well uh, as, as you would like it to go. And you know what? I, I don't know. What's your thought on it then? Like, just be, I so look at that and say, you know what, just be honest and say, hey, this is new stuff. I'm excited about it. We're going to learn together. I'm excited that you're here on this journey with me. And yeah. let the patient know in a positive way. You don't want to sit there and go, I really suck at this because <laughs> I've never <laughs> yeah. done it before. Because that's. But if, you, if you admit that, that actually helps people to put their guard down too, because you're just being real. But you've got to do it in a way that I think is, is uh, you're conveying okay. a sense of humor as opposed to, I'm really serious here. I, I have no clue what I'm doing right now. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know teeth. <laughs> yeah. What's that? I said, but I know teeth. Exactly. But <laughs> I think to encourage in a positive way so that people know they're part of a process. And, mm -hmm. and, and I see it like, I don't know how much more it's used in the States. It certainly seems to be that there are a good five or so years, maybe even more ahead of us on using those platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited about them. I think, I think that dentists should be, uh, should be looking into that in a big way. And, and again, I think if you, if you educate your patients and your clients on 
what to expect, then you just don't want to all of a sudden surprise them like, oh, this is what we're going to do. You know, if you have that whole, it's like the before experience, right? So what can you do before the actual appointment? So that's a wonderful before experience that you're communicating, you're educating them, you're connecting with them. So you already have that, that loyal fan already happening. And then by the time that they do come in, they've got to know you, they've got to know your practice, they'll, they'll even be familiar with your office even if it's their first time there because you've walked them through it. And so to me, I think communication is the number one thing that we could all be doing. And I think you guys that now more than ever, if you know, there's dental offices out there that haven't done teledentistry, now is the time because the world is so open to, oh my goodness, like before we would have thought, you know, our patients would think we were crazy trying this new technique out. And now like, it's more acceptable than ever. When you have a specialist appointment, I did too, Kath, you know, and um, you're gonna dial in. And, and so people are so aware, the time is now to, and I love your statement, Angela, you know, if we continue to do what we've always done, then we're gonna continue to get what we've always got. So let's be um, proactive and innovative and move forward because the world is with us right now. Yeah. And I say all the time, you know, we walk down a street, like, pick a city, London, Toronto, wherever. And, you know, there's five, six dental offices within two blocks. So if you continue to do what you've always done, then you're totally missing the boat, right? It's okay to be scared, but if you do nothing, then you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. in yeah. And in the chaos of everything that's happening, this is the time to try anything that you want to try. If it's time to redesign your practice, because you realize, you know, I was so happy not to do such and such during the pandemic, or I really miss doing this thing and you want to start pivoting your practice. Now is the time because it's not going to be abnormal to do different things. And when it comes to the teledentry, I think it's a great thing to be trying. If there's different apps that you want to be trying to put in place, do it. If you want to change the way that you practice, do it because the chaos has made it so nothing is weird right now. Right. Any, anything is open for uh, discussion and trial. Right. So one thing that I feel that is um, a little bit um, interesting, maybe in our profession right now. And so Kathleen and I are dental hygienists, but I'm finding from the patient experience that in certain provinces um, and, you know, we're in Ontario, so we're going to speak about Ontario, but, you know, dental hygienists, um, it's a pandemic. So, you know, limiting aerosols, having the rooms blocked off. Um, who, who's polishing, who's not. And often I say a husband and wife come to the dental office and they get two totally different experiences. How on earth, 2020 is probably not the best example, but you know, 2020, how is this happening? And so getting your teams together, talking about what are you doing? Kath, what's going on in your operatory? You know, why are you scared to use aerosol generating procedures? It's not business as usual. So we're not treating everyone like we did before, but if practices don't have these kind of conversations, um, we always have to think about it from patient perception. Right. And we know this is old school and our students that are learning learn selective polish. But to many, many of our patients out there, they don't feel a dental hygiene appointment is complete until they've had the polish. So it's our job to educate, engage and involve to teach them where we're at. And sadly, in a lot of places, we're just we're not seeing that. So we have an opportunity to do better because we know better. Right. And it's, it's so important that because I've heard a lot of people being disappointed that they went for their appointment and uh, all they had was the, was the scalers, um, they didn't get their teeth polished. So if you're not doing those things, you have to tell them before they come. And that's again, where I think you do a very positive video on the importance of them coming in for their scaling and root planing. But you, you don't, like if you're not doing the polishing, you need to tell them before they come because they're going to be disappointed. They're going to leave. They're going to tell their friends. It's a negative experience. So, you know, get them ready for what to expect, what not to expect. And I saw some people are actually doing profies with a brush and putting maybe a little bit of the paste with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. And they're, and some people are like, yeah, I've tried that. It's great. So, you know, it just depends on, on, on where you're practicing, what you have in place, but let people know what it is that you're doing so that they don't leave feeling that they got jipped off. Right. 
Have you guys seen as well, like some of the practices I work with, I've been seeing a lot of bullying happening in practices when there's a difference in opinion of how serious the situation is, how much PPE should be worn. Why are you doing that when I'm doing this? I disagree with you. And I've had some of my owners lose some of their best players because they got bullied out by the other team members and the leader didn't lead. They didn't have a spine to speak up and say, hey, this is not okay. Let's have an open discussion about this. Deal with the elephant in the room so that we can create peace again. They were afraid to lose team members, so they let the chaos continue, and then they're losing star star players. I think that's um, that's a great point, Ange. I actually sit chair a committee for the Canadian Dental Hygienist Association on um, like healthy workplace and we've just put together a whole um, program because there's all forms of bullying and harassment and having a different opinion shouldn't make you lose your job or make you feel like you don't want to get out of your car and go to work and so I'm a huge advocate of always like you know yeah you're gonna have non-productive time but you know you have to pause slow down regroup as a team to communicate, set some priorities, um, discuss action items and, you know, be, have a fun, safe, respectful meeting. But if you don't talk about these things, um, there's, I can't remember the percentage I had read in, I think dentistry IQ, but you know, people who have a negative Nelly sort of in their practice and the owner dentist does nothing about it, ends up losing more good people instead of, and I'm not trying to advocate to clean house or anything like that, but you know, we have to be respectful of what's going on. We don't want that to happen, right? We want to work together as a team. Mm -hmm. Agreed. For sure. And, and I, I think, you know, and I don't want to provide ready-made excuses, but I mean, let's face it, this, the last seven, eight months has been very stressful on people. And when you're living under that constant state of stress, it, it is that much easier for us to kind of snap and lose it. And, and we have to differentiate and, and be somewhat receptive and open to the fact that, look, you know, I'm sorry, somebody's obviously having a bad day today and I'm going to be forgiving of that. And differentiate between that person that just snapped today and those, as you say, that like, this is, this is who they are, you know, they're, and, and, and it's just being made that much worse by the current situation. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of true personalities come out, which is, I think it's actually a good thing. Um, especially as Canadians, we're really good at being like, oh, I'm just going to push everything down and be polite. <laughs> and the pandemic just like tore all that politeness away and got people down to their authentic selves. And we're seeing that some team members are not a good fit for a practice anymore. And so they're able to move on and find their authentic fit. And I think that's actually, it, it's annoying. Um, if you have to lose a team member that you thought was great, but now you've discovered they're, what they really are like. But there's also the people who aren't talking about it and they're just so torn up inside that they're acting out. And I think the owners and the other team members need to surround those people and just have a good conversation. I'm not surrounding them with like pitchforks, surrounding them with love and just saying, you know, what can we do to help you? Because this is not who you were before. This is totally out of character as to what we expected. So what is happening in your world that we can offer you some support? Maybe you just need to talk about it and air what's going on so we can help you to move forward and still be part of our amazing team. And I think this is um, a great time to bring up a topic and maybe not everybody's going to agree with it, but, you know, more and more, I keep hearing having conversation with dentists is, you know, ad admin team members is hiring outside of the box. We always tried to hire a dental assistant for admin or someone who, um, you know, finished a program where they had those skills. And now more than ever during this pandemic, have we learned that, we really want to hire for that amazing personality, that coachable person, that team player. And we can then, you know, everybody, I didn't work at McDonald's as, um, as a, a kid, but um, everyone says like, oh my goodness, if you can get someone who worked at McDonald's or um, hotels, tourism, those people, sadly, their jobs are like, they're gone. So hire amazing personalities, coach them and teach them the dental piece. And I keep hearing that across the country. And so everyone's on the lookout for that amazing customer experience when you go somewhere. So that is seems to be the new hotter new norm. Nice. 
a lot of those people who come from those other industries come from standardization as well, which is something in dentistry where it's like, oh, I'm going to do it the way that I want and feel today instead of having that standardization. So it actually helps tremendously. And frankly, in my practice, my best admin people came from outside the industry and I liked them because they didn't bring in baggage. They didn't come in with these expectations that they had from other practices. And if there's a, uh, admin people on here, I'm not trying to offend you, but that was my experience. And I've seen that over and over again, that people who are fresh to the industry tend to, I find they try harder. They haven't come in with ex expectations that they're going to be making a ton of money. Like an assistant or someone who comes in from like Cairo might be coming in asking for 18 bucks an hour. And someone who came from dental before with similar experiences coming in at 30 bucks an hour similar job they just came from different expectations because of different industries and you have a choice right now because there's not very many admin people available so get creative with your solutions and and on on that as well um you know i've dealt with a, a practice and so they hired amazing people for customer service and they used to work in a restaurant so they worked till 2 a.m so they're like you want me to work till 7 p.m sign me up <laughs> right because he thought, wow, I now have my whole evening ahead or I can tuck my kids into bed and like my life is looking really good. So it's thinking outside of the box and, um, you know, giving it a whirl. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think, and not, not to put it all just on the admin team members, as, an, as a profession in dentistry, we've not always been as good as we need to be in terms of investing in training. So part of the motivation for hiring that person that comes from dentistry is I won't have to train them, you know? Oh, this person looks like they're absolutely wonderful, but they, they don't use the practice management software system that I, I've used. So I'd have to train them on that. And that's gonna cost me X amount of dollars in time. And whereas I hire this other one who doesn't seem as good in the interview, but knows my system because they've worked on it before, I'll go with the easy hire because I don't have to train. And, and, and Angie talked about the importance of standardization. Well, we don't have it because we don't train for it in a lot of cases, right? True. But you get that outside person and you can mold them exactly the way that you want. And well, <laughs> some great ideas too that they can bring to your, to your practice as well. Some yes. fresh ideas. Exactly. And, and I think it forces you to have to go into training because now I'm bringing someone that with fresh ideas, but none of them are dental related. They don't know how to, they, they won't know. Someone's going to call indicating some aspect of a dental procedure and they're just going to sit there and go, she wants what? Because <laughs> they've got to be educated on the basics. Yeah, it was funny. We've, we've been doing, we had this practice restart program and this one clinic that we did some one-on-one -on -one coaching with, they're practicing a phone call and all the people with dental background just want to hop to like the diagnosis. And the one who came from the banking industry, actually, she had no idea what any dental terminology was. She was new to the practice and she asked the best questions because she was coming at the same level as the patient instead of coming at them with this extra knowledge that they're like, Oh, you said this, Oh, it must mean this. So instead she just, she could pull information out of people so beautifully because she didn't have that background, which when you have someone front facing with the public who doesn't have that dental background, it's an amazing way to build your practice and actually develop better relationships on that first phone call. That's great. And I don't have it sitting here beside me, but um, one of the best books that I read during COVID that really talks about this sort of experience. Um, I don't make any money from it, but I'd love to share. It's called People First Culture. And um, it's by Michelle Falcon. And it was the best book ever to think about this um, customer service related and how to find people that are amazing and reward systems and what to do on their first day in your clinic and get them a mentor. And, you know, we talk about dental assistants that come into our offices and temp or dental hygienists that temp. And then, you know, somebody's complaining about them and I'll be like, but what systems in place to guide them and help them? Like they just got dropped in. Here's your scalers. They're probably the worst in the office. Yeah. I don't, I don't, we don't have a system like, and they're just left to go, but everyone wants to be so harsh on them. And so people first culture really uh, opened my eyes to a lot of really awesome things that we can do um, even better than we're doing right now. That's great. 
I, I like that because I, I mean, it's, it's not just obviously about ter in terms of making it great in terms of how the team works. This is all about then projecting it so that, that the patients pick up on that. And, and, you know, I mean, we're, we're in a situation now, I, I, I don't know how much it's happening in some of the offices that you're dealing with, but again, because numbers are rising, patients that maybe were just starting to feel comfortable to venture out in the world, they, uh, you know, things were looking so good in August, I'm hearing a lot of offices getting hit with patients calling up saying, yeah, I think I'm going to cancel that appointment. And when you try to reschedule it, their response is, let's wait and see. So how are we how are we dealing with that? You need to deal with it with empathy because if that's how a patient feels, that's how they feel. And if you try to like hard sell them, like use car salesman them into coming into the practice, they're gonna go somewhere else. Instead, find out why they're scared and you're not even having to try and change their mind, just find out what is happening because you're gonna put that goodwill in right now that's gonna pay off dividends when you move forward. If you try to force them to come in, they're not going to come back and they're going to tell other people that you were trying to force them to come in and it's very bad for your reputation. We can be doing so much for our communities right now with free education. If someone needs something and they can't afford it, can we be providing that care and making that part of our community service and part of our pro bono programs to help people get to the other side of this? Because we are so, so privileged in dentistry. Our work is never going to disappear. Other businesses, they will never recover, but we will eventually recover and the work will still be there. And I think because we've been able to make lots of cash in the past, I think it's time to pay it back. And, you know, I, when people ask me about the PPE thing, and I'd love to hear everyone else's opinion on this too, I would not charge the extra cost for the PPE because everyone is in trouble right now financially. So you nickel and dime, Exactly. I would say, see ya, I'm going somewhere else that's not going to do that, especially when we know that this is someone who's in a privileged position. So Ange, I'd love your um, opinion because, you know, we've all seen different uh, videos flying around on YouTube and different sites where, you know, dentists feel angry because they got lumped with the cost of all this PPE. And then in Ontario, College of Dental Hygienists with, you know, they have to wear an um, N95 mask or equivalent and the cost of that. And if they touch it, then the integrity has gone and you have to get a new one. So, um, you know, it can be tough for the dentists on this side. So I have had some friends that say, you know, we're trying to charge the PPE costs because you go to get your nails done and it costs more. You go to get your hair done and it costs more. So mm -hmm. your perspective as a dentist is really good on that, that yeah, everybody is hurting. It's not just all about us. We really need to think about, yes, I know the businesses need to run and we need to make, uh, when we do the right thing, the money follows. So awesome. <laughs> What's that saying with the don't step over the pennies to get to the dollars or don't step over the dollars to get to the pennies? That's exactly yeah. it. Because you, you know, if you have that abundance mindset and you, um, it'll all work out in the end. Like the more, the more you, you give and the more you're doing, um, if, if you're always worrying about this penny and that penny, um, it's going to, it might have a negative impact on you. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen some social media marketing from some of the dentists where they are specifically pointing out that there is no PPE charge at their office. So, I mean, think about it. That's what it come down to. It's become a marketing piece. Yeah. 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 Like there's no gluten in this jelly. <laughs> there shouldn't be any gluten in that jelly. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, kind of getting back to what we were talking about earlier, um, you know, I see when we're dealing with that patient who is maybe a little bit more, a little bit higher on the COVID anxiety side of things and is, is reluctant to come in, I see teledentistry as being an ideal tool to be able to reach out to them. Yeah. It may take more than one session with them, but if you can reach out to them and, and provide what triaging care you can, over a, a teledentistry platform and build up a sense of confidence that, you know what, we've, we, we can treat you safely here. You will be safe coming into the dental office. I, I see teledentistry as being an ideal platform to be able to try to overcome some of that anxiety. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I love it, but I, I agree. I know when I get talking to people, um, you know, it's in, in particularly when, because they know 
that, that there's that element of patients out there that are going to be frustrated, that are going to be sort of frustrating for them to feel that they're having to deal with because, oh, I got another one who's COVID anxious, but you can't approach it that way. And you, you know, empathy comes from asking questions. So when you've got that patient that's reluctant to come in, even if you think you know the answer, you still got to ask the question. Yeah. Great. You know, so so are, how are you training and coaching some of them in terms of, you know, deal with it this way, answer phones that way, talk to patients this way? Yeah, we want we want our admin teams to to be real, like to be human first and, you know, professional and kind. And it's that old saying, listen far more than you speak. Right. Be interested in somebody rather than you be interesting. And when you slow it down, and I think we've all learned that during this pandemic, um, it's not about us, it's about, our, it's about everyone else, right? And when you teach that to people, or you just remind, and you watch the impact of it on what it can do for your practice, it's unbelievable. And that brings me back to educate, educate, educate. Um, if, you, if you educate your, your patients, again, showing them the office, everything that you put in place is probably the safest place to be. Um, and then also if you educate on why they need to come in, if it's for hygiene or we're seeing a lot of fractures and everything. So why it's so important for us to see you during this time. So if they cancel, maybe you've already done a video. Um, it, you know, like I said, I had that PowerPoint. So you could record and do the PowerPoint and then you put it on your YouTube channel, you send them the link, you know, sorry that you canceled today, but we just really want you to know how important your dental hygiene visit is. You, you know, just that touch and then they'll watch it and they'll see, okay, that's, you know, because a lot of people don't understand the importance of the dental visit, right? It's about the whole overall, overall health. So if you can educate them on a simple way, it doesn't have to be a long video, short video, and again, showing them your office, I think that is, the best thing that you can do, at least just even seeing your face and, they're, and you're educating them and maybe they're gonna brush a little better, maybe they're gonna clean between their teeth a little better. Um, it's just, <laughs> hopefully, just in my world, in my world they do. <laughs> well, I think that education piece is good, but for someone who's resistant, that may not hit them well. I think having that kindness and that empathy approaching the conversation is gonna go a long way giving them the tips that they can help themselves at home is, is great, but trying to be like, well, you should come in because we can, and we, this is going to help you and blah, blah, blah. I think if I was a resistant patient, I would not be very receptive to that, Kathleen. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would be, I, cause I've been like, if I didn't know something and if I didn't want to go somewhere and it's just my way of not really understanding, like maybe I'm not going to come in still, but at least now I understand the importance of it and I'm going to take better care of my teeth while I'm, you know, alone in my home. Mm -hmm. but it's not like I'm saying be mean about it. I'm just saying, you know, still have empathy with it, but here's some of the things I want you to think about while you're at home, right? Mm -hmm. We just want to help you. And it's not, a, it's not a hard sale. It's not, um, these are just things that I've done with my offices and it seemed to work. So, yeah. I think there's that middle ground in there where, you know, like you say, you don't want to beat anyone over the head for shame on you for not looking after or caring about your oral health. Don't you know how important it is at the same time as acknowledging that, um, you know, we, we, we can go too far. And, and if we don't take the time, and this is, this is the key in a lot of the cases from what I experience is we don't necessarily take the time to actually learn what it is we need to do and how to conduct these conversations. I'm a huge fan of role playing and so many offices and teams are just reluctant to go down that path. And invariably, when, because they don't, when they get into some of those challenging situations and conversations, they haven't developed the synapses as to how to respond and the wrong things come out of their mouths and you're kind of like going, oh, can we get that back? No, we cannot. The damage has been done. So, uh, I mean, I'm a firm believer in, in, in working that out. I mean, I've talked to people that when you are, when you are looking at it from the perspective of bringing, dealing with that patient who's anxious, have that empathy, ask them what the reluctance is, give them that sense of understanding, be okay to say, I feel, I feel the same concern. And I certainly wouldn't work in a place where I didn't feel safe. 
and and you know let them know that the decision is ultimately up to them absolutely i the one the one thing that i always find though that people kind of skip over they spend so, some time talking about the things that they are doing now to keep people safe in the world of covid the last thing i want to do is create the impression that i didn't i never did any of this before mm -hmm. You know, that it's only because COVID happened that suddenly I'm concerned about your health. Yeah, but Sean, um, some of the things, you know, were Im impacted from in Ontario from the summer of 2017 when public health, you know, really clamped down on um, dental offices. And so gowns were already supposed to be in place and everyone was in an uproar because they thought, oh, the pandemic. But that's been years now that those should have been in place. So many people have learned a lot, a big lesson. And, you know, there is a financial cost to it, but it's it's safety first, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we went away from like having that clean hospital type setting to trying to be like a funky practice or more casual and whatnot about it. And now we're going back to that high level of that high standard which i'm not sure is a terrible thing i agree yeah i think so too uh we've been at this for an hour already do you believe yeah. <laughs> good job that's that's fun, fun. everybody fun. thank you it was good oh, fun. final thoughts well it's nice to see the golden girls <laughs> 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 including you the the lead, the lead the the girls. <laughs> if we can ever cruise again i'll be a cruise director once more oh gosh, yeah so, um, final thoughts. I think you guys are awesome. Um, Sean, thank you so much for having us on here. You're a pioneer in trying to get, you know, get us thinking differently. Um, you know, you and your mom have an amazing group going and um, it's an honor that we came together through, you know, the Golden Girls cruise and now we're going to be lifelong friends. Yep. And um, there's never competition. It's always supporting and working together and being each other's cheerleader, just like we would want that to be inside um, all the practices that we each come in contact with every single day. Thank you. Um, and uh, along with final thoughts, any ways if people want to reach out to you with any questions, concerns, let, let us, you know, this is an opportunity to share that information as well, Jen, before you, we move on. Sure. So um, I am more than happy for anybody who wants to have a chat or, um, you know, email. My email is jturner. So it's j-t-u-r-n-e-r -E at 123dentist.com. And please feel free because I'm happy to chat. All right. For myself, you can get a hold of me at info at unleashingdentistry.com. Kathleen. And follow you on your Instagram with your beautiful ballroom dancing. <laughs> Facebook. Um, okay, so mine is Kathleen, K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N at R-D-H-U dot C-A. All right. Well, I want to thank each of you for uh, spending an hour here with me this evening. I know from some of our conversations that uh, you have, uh, as well as work-related stuff, you guys all have a whole ton of stuff going on behind the scenes personally with uh, activities and, and things going on in your life. So busy schedules, all of you. So I appreciate you taking the time to join us here this evening and uh, wish you the best of luck on all those ventures. And thanks, thanks for, for coming out and stay healthy, keep doing well and keep spreading the wonderful words that you guys do and supporting all of our colleagues in this wonderful profession that we have. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Stay healthy and well. Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.